This is Scott Fain with the Youngstown Lifestyle Podcast, and today I'm with uh, Amy Bergen from Bergen. I said Amy Bergen. <laughs> Amy Day <laughs> with Bergen Real Estate. Excuse me. <laughs> and what I basically this is the beginning of this uh, podcast. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different. We're spending a little bit of time talking about the home buying process and in this particular area. One of the goals that uh, you mentioned to me, Amy, is that you're interested in working in more higher-end properties and things like that. And uh, so I wanted to touch base uh, at least about the home buying process and getting started for someone looking in that area. All right, so for people who may be upsized into a larger home or for some other reason, what's your advice on the first thing that they could be doing when they're getting ready to purchase? Well, the first thing that is, is super important is making sure that you get pre-qualified or pre-approved. Um, you know, we've, we run into a lot of times people will kind of self-identify what their price range is without talking to a mortgage originator. And some of the problems with that is when you go to these online search mechanisms like Zillow or Realtor and it says, buy this house, it's, your mortgage will only be $700 a month. Well, that sounds great. It doesn't sound very expensive, but you're not factoring in your taxes and insurance. And what we find in some of those higher-end properties is, um, you know, if you're talking Canfield, Poland, Parts of Boardman, I mean, your your property taxes are pretty high. So you got to keep in mind that although the payment might be $700 a month, your property taxes can be, depending on where you are and how much property you have, you know, four or $500 more per month. You know, so mm-hmm. it really just depends on, um, you know, what, what you're actually qualified for. And that really helps the realtor kind of figure out where we could put you. Um, it's step one in any search that we're going to help you find. You know, any search we're going to set up for you is going to be what is our price range. Um, so definitely getting pre, the first step in anything is getting pre-approved or pre-qualified um, through a mortgage lender. And you have your own uh, in-house lender, is that correct? Yeah, we work uh, pretty closely with a couple of lenders in the area, um, but the one that, that I like to use the most is Amerifirst. Um, there's an agent there, Bob Grass, and he has done fantastic things for some of my clients. Amerifirst offers an array of mortgage loans, so he will help find the best product for you and get that pre-approval. What's really nice is they work very closely with us, so if you say, hey, I'm working with Amy Day, he'll just shoot me over an email with that pre-approval, and that kind of relieves any, you know, buyer of needing to print it out and bring it with them or, you know, forwarding it themselves. It's just a way that him and I can work closely together and kind of save a few steps for the buyer because it's going to, it can become a pretty stressful time when you're buying a home. It can be, especially when you're considering um, sometimes when people are buying a house like the the, the kind we're talking about, they may have a property already that uh, they need to sell before they can move. How do you factor that into your uh, your initial conversation with someone? Well, if you've already had the conversation with your mortgage originator, then you're already aware if you have to sell your current home first or if you can kind of keep your home on the market. Um, you know, a great example is um, I worked with a family member recently, and because of his, how low his mortgage payment was on his first home, he didn't have to sell it, and now he's able to kind of do like a land contract for his sister who isn't sure she wants to stay. So he said, hey, let's do a land contract. But it just gives him an outlet. So if he does decide to sell in the future, we can definitely help him out, but he's not forced into it. Um, it was also helpful, you know, during the closing of the new home because then we weren't worried about coordinating schedules and um, getting him out of his home so the new buyers could, you know, move in as well as, you know, getting him into his new home. So there's just a lot that goes into that. However, I've also worked on the other end of it where, you know, we had a a, a couple that sold their home and they hadn't actually found a home yet. So they did have to spend a couple of weeks at one of their relatives' houses. So when you're talking to the mortgage lender and they're pulling your credit and calculating your debt-to-income ratio, they'll be able to tell you, well, yes, you will have to get your home sold prior to um, you know, purchasing a new home, and those are just different contingencies that your realtor can help work through with you so that it doesn't necessarily stop you from finding a new home, but it definitely makes sure you want to make sure that your home is with the right real, listed with the right realtor and priced accordingly so that you will sell quickly, and there's a lot of different points that we can help when you're selling your home as well. But that's an important part of just when it comes to determining the person's buying goals and 
and uh, making a plan plan of action for how Absolutely. you're going to uh, help them find the place. Whenever I was, you know, dealing with uh, helping people find homes and stuff like that, I was doing consulting work. That would be a big part of how we would get started, would be to mm -hmm. understand exactly what they're looking to do so that you're not, you know, having to show 150 houses or anything like that. Uh, because you want right. to, you know, it's wasted everybody's time if you're you spend a bunch of time seeing things they don't want. Like, let's show you exactly what you're looking for. Um, right. And one of the things... I had a question about uh, what are your minimum standards. I was looking, listening to some uh, Mike Ferry. Are you familiar with him at all? Um, a little bit, yeah. I've heard some of his stuff. Oh, okay. So he has this uh, great seminar on working with buyers that I was listening to. And um, one of the things that he, he mentioned, that I didn't have it, is he, he, he names it off as having minimum standards for the people that you're working with. And, like, he'll have a minimum standard for it. I'm not taking you out in the car unless you've met with and have pre-approval by a lender, for instance. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a couple of other ones that, that, you know, he'll mention. I was just curious as to what your minimum standards are. What do you like to see before you're ready to get in the car with someone? What do you like to see from them? Well, the pre-approval is definitely a big one. Um, I don't want to say that I've never shown a home for some to someone who is not pre-approved. Um, but if, if especially if you're a first-time home buyer, there really is no point in looking unless you've been pre-approved. And everybody says, well, I, I have great credit. But for a realtor, when we hear things like that, we think, well, if you have great credit, how come you haven't made this first phone call? Because that's the first step into serious, you know, a serious home buying search. Um, but, you know, again, like I said, there are people that I've taken out that um, – they have not been pre-approved, and which is perfectly fine. Uh, example is someone who's maybe downsizing from a larger home. I'm able to see, okay, this is where your home is. I can see that there's definite equity here. So in the event that you did find something you liked, then we would definitely have to get your home listed on the market to sell so you could purchase this home. So there's, there's other ways around it. Um, but back to that pre-approval, one of the things we see a lot of now is home – homeowners that are currently selling their homes, they don't want people in their homes unless they are pre-approved, unless the realtor can forward that pre-approval to the listing agent. And the number one reason is we don't live in a very trusting time anymore. Um, you know, so people don't want just strangers walking through their house, just what we call looky-loos, you know, just wanting to check it out. You know, that's kind of what open houses are for and, and things like that. But you know, you're you're kind of taking time out of their day. They've got to prep their house, clean their house, make sure everything's picked up, and then leave their house for a certain period of time so you could see it. They want to make sure they're doing all of that work for a good reason for, and for a qualified right. buyer. Um, for a purpose. And, you know, for a purpose, exactly. I mean, I guess you wouldn't want, you know, I, per, I personally wouldn't want to have to go through the, the hassle of clean, picking up. I mean, oh, my goodness, if you have animals, you got to get your animals secured so someone can come in your house. I mean, there's right. so many different steps, and I kind of think, well, and I've talked to clients about this before. Well, you're not pre-approved. I'd love to show you the home. It's maybe a 10-minute phone conversation. That's all it takes. Uh, when it comes to determining how some, you know, what someone wants to purchase or anything like that, how much do you rate uh, actually going and visiting the person's home uh, that you're about to help find a place? You know, I think like that would maybe be a good idea. Uh, just to understand where they're at now. You know, if they say, I want more light, you know, I, I'm looking for a house with better lighting, knowing what their current lighting status is seems like a good idea for me. I, I don't know. I, what do you do as far as, you know, your research on the person, you know, when you're getting started? Well, anytime that I'm getting started with a new person, I, I have to take a little extra precaution. Um, so I at least like to, you know, Google search them, see if they actually do own the home that they say they own, you know, by looking at the county auditor and things like that. Um, usually it takes a buyer a couple visits with me before they'll invite me into their home to show me what they have. Um, I found that to be an advantage and a disadvantage. Um, you know, I, I've worked with people that, like I said before, downsizing, uh, maybe an older couple whose family have, they've just out, They've all moved out of the house, and the house is too big. Um, it's nice to be able to see their home prior to taking them out to home because you can, you know, get a better picture of what they have and what they're looking for. However, at the same time, it might be a disadvantage because 
when a you know when you own your home you kind of you get those goggles you know those rose colored glasses where you don't see the the carpet's old or the the kitchen's outdated or things like that so you walk in these other homes with buyer's eyes and you say oh my goodness nothing here's nothing here's updated i'm going to have to gut the whole thing and then you go to their home and it's the same way so it's it kind of can be a two edged sword because you don't want to be the one pointing out hey your home looks just like this when they don't see it that way because, you know, it's their home. Um, but, yeah, usually they do the way – yeah, yeah, so it's kind of difficult. But what the way we meet customers now or clients is, you know, through the phone or during open houses. So, like I said, we're, we're just as much a stranger to them as they are to us, so they probably do just as much research on us to make sure we're legit as we do on them. Now, as far as uh, – one of the things that I like to see with a person um, is the ability or the, the preparedness, I guess, if you will, of making an offer. You know, like if you're, do you, is that something that you're telling people initially too? Is like, okay, well, we got your, they've gone through the process. They've gotten their pre-approval. You kind of know what they're looking for. You're going out your first time showing them properties, these properties that you kind of cultivated, you, you know, you looked for, you found something that seemed like they would be a perfect fit. Um, how prepared are your clients for making an offer on that day if they find something? You know, they're definitely prepared, you know, as far as purchasing prepared, but maybe not mentally prepared. And, you know, writing an offer can it can be uh, kind of stressful. You know, there's a bunch of papers, and you want to read read it through line by line. What I try to do for a lot of my buyers is give them a copy of a contract so they can read through it on their own and kind of have an expectation of, you know, what I'm going to go over with them while we're writing it. Because there are a lot of fill in, fill in the blanks there. Um, everything is kind of moving more digital as well. So going line by line when you're e-signing things seems kind of silly, but it is 100% necessary. You know, that initial offer is, is going to tell you things that you're going to have questions on throughout the whole 30 to 45-day process. You know, you're going to – um, need to figure out how much earnest money you're going to put down, which is, is your good faith deposit. So it kind of shows the home seller that you're serious about buying their home. It's going to tell you how long you have to set up your inspections. Um, it's going to, I mean, it goes through in that contract what a major element repair is, as well as go over possession time. So after everything is done and you've signed your paperwork, how many days do you have from the date you sign your paperwork to the date it's filed with the county to getting the key. You know, so these are just different different things, different steps we have to go through to make sure everybody is, is okay with, with our timeline and the processes. And that home inspection and the major element inspection, those are both contingencies that come prior to an appraisal. So once those home inspections are, are done and you're satisfied with the results or any negotiating has been done, um, you know, if there was a major element repair that needed to be negotiated, um, then it, it gives us, we'll sign a piece of paper releasing the contingency, and it allows the, the bank or the mortgage originator to move forward with that appraisal process. And generally, from the time you write the offer to, and then you negotiate to get it under contract, you usually have about, we usually allow about 14 days for that home inspection, which is two, you know, two weeks. Um, Right. You know, that next day, once that seller says, okay, I agree to these terms of you buying my home, once they sell, once they sign that, you really want to start calling your home inspectors. And we do have, we work with home inspectors as well, so I'm able to provide a list of, of local home inspectors, and I don't have their prices, unfortunately, but, you know, they'll give That's you their fine. prices right over the phone. I want to save some of that for uh, our next one. We're talking a little bit more yeah. about the actual making the offer and, and whatnot, because uh, that's some good information, you know, as far as the types of things that you that you're talking about with the home inspection. But just with the, you know, just within getting started on the home buying process, uh, just to recap, I think the big points that you've been pointing out to to me uh, seems to be get your money right first. You know, know mm -hmm. know what your money is going to look like. You know, what kind of financing you can do. Uh, you know, I would also think about you know how much you're going to put down on the down payment and things like that and you know, like like what you're saying, that your lender can help you determine, you know, what you can do and can't do. 
and right. then just having a, a, a real understanding of what you're looking for in your timeline. Absolutely. Is there anything, is there anything else that you, you know, would as a parting tip for someone who's just about to get started looking in, in property, especially in the area that we're talking about, Youngstown and some of the outer lying areas uh, for the higher end properties. Is there anything else that you want to uh, reiterate or, or at least end on? Yeah, you know, there's there is something with Amerifirst, and this is why they're one of my preferred lenders. Um, that is not very common in this area, but I'm really hoping that it will become um, more common with the more exposure it gets. It's called a 203k loan. So, have you worked with those before, Scott? I'm familiar with them. Uh, I can't give you all the outlines, but I'm familiar. Go ahead. Yeah. So, just to kind of touch on it, um, you know, there's a lot of times that home buyers will see homes that are maybe under their price range in a great area, um, in the right school district, uh, close to mom's house or wherever they need to be, you know, it, it kind of checks all the points, except the inside of the house might not look that great. Um, if the house is priced right, so let's say that the house would normally in an updated condition be worth $100,000, but the home seller is selling it for $75,000 because they know the lime green bathroom is not the newest style or the, the flooring is not the newest style, whatever it may be. Bob right. Grass can help get a 203K loan. And what that does is they'll come in and appraise the home at the at the value if it was updated. And that difference between that 100000 and that 75000 and this is not an exact, it's not exactly 25000 so don't take it that way. And Bob can kind of get <laughs> we'll, into more detail. But it we'll, see, we'll forgive you, you for, the, for that. Uh, (laughs) but it it basically allows you to make these updates it gives you it gives you access to to cash and they also help you set up contractors and you know get you estimates and all kinds they're very very helpful there there's actually a guy they just hired on specifically to help people find contractors his name is matt i can't pronounce his last name so i'm not going to do it but he works very closely with bobby works very closely with bergen and he does a fantastic job connecting, you know, home buyers with contractors for those estimates as well as providing, you know, an outlet. So now you can update that home to the way that you like it to be updated. You know, that mm. way the, the seller is not worried, oh, should I refinish the hardwood floors? Well, you never know. Your buyer might want brand new carpet. And then that way, you know, with that 2 or 3K loan, the, the buyer makes that decision and they also have the cash to do it. Buying a home is already an expensive situation. Nine times out of ten, you're getting a loan. You're not purchasing it with cash. And you're putting a large amount of money down as a down payment. So with all of that being said, you know, them allowing you to, you know, do this loan and and appraising it at what it would be worth if it was updated with all of these repairs done or all of these updates done, it really gives someone an option to, you know, buy a home, a nice home that needs some work, and put the work into it immediately, not, you know, 10 years. I mean, I'm, I've been in my house for nine years, and I still haven't finished my honey-do list. But if I had a 203 cut k <laughs> loan or if I knew about it, you know, that definitely would have been something, you know, nine years ago that I would have def- seriously checked into. Most folks don't know about stuff and, until they know about it. And some, most of the time it's too late when it comes to <laughs> these types of things. So hopefully, exactly. people, uh, you know, early on where this can be part right. of that that uh, initial conversation because that is exactly. good. It's, it's a great way to reinvent the older neighborhoods and get new life mm-hmm. into them, you know, people buying like that. Well, uh, I want to thank you for this first edition of this particular conversation on home buying. Uh, the next time we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, making that offer and the EMB and what's involved with that. You'll be, I'm going to put this on our website and you'll be able to connect with Amy through our website. I'll have our contact information, all that good stuff there for you. But I want to thank you again, Amy Day from Bergen, <laughs> uh, for coming with me. And, uh, we'll do this again very soon. All right. Great. Thanks, Scott. Have a great day.